Today, it's movie recap time for a drama movie called Camp X-Ray, released in 2014. It all starts with the news of the 9-11 attacks unfolding on TV. Soon after, a man gets home and proceeds to arrange a bunch of cell phones on a table. Afterward, he enters a room and begins to pray. All of a sudden, someone comes and quickly places a bag over his head. He is then transported to a detention camp in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. Fast forward eight years, and we see a line of new soldiers marching past a block while the incarcerated individuals vigorously shout at them. These soldiers enter a room where they receive initial instructions and a tour. Their superior officer, Ransdell, explains that one can only call them detainees and never use the word prisoner. He then requests volunteers to subdue a detainee who's causing trouble, and soldier Amy Cole steps forward. She is instructed to focus only on restraining the detainee's right arm, which she attempts to do until the man strikes her with his elbow. Cole feels the hit and allows the others to overpower the man. As soon as they secure him and move him out of the cell, he spits on Cole. In retaliation, she kicks him before they immobilize him in a wheelchair. Soon after, her welcome incident is what everyone talks about on the bus. Ransdell jokes that he'd kiss her even with her lips looking like that, but Cole instantly rebuffs his advances. That night, Cole engages in a video call with her mother. The following day, Cole is assigned the task of distributing books to the detainees. She approaches one of them to ask if he'd like a book, but he becomes crazy aggressive toward her. Ransdell steps in and instructs the detainee to calm down. When Cole asks if she did something wrong, Ransdell explains that some of the detainees simply don't like dealing with women. Cole proceeds to push the cart to cell 105, where the prisoner complains about how he's been requesting the last Harry Potter book for two years to no avail. Two years I'm asking you guys to give me this last book. Annoyed, Cole informs him that they only have the books on the cart and impatiently urges him to choose a book. When the man finally decides and asks for the Azkaban book, Cole asks him if he's talking about an Arab book. The detainee laughs and clarifies that it's the fourth book of the Harry Potter series. Later on, Cole goes for a run and takes in the view of the bay, deep in thought about her new life there. The next day, her duty involves making rounds to check on the detainees. In cell 105, the man attempts to strike up a conversation with her, addressing her as Blondie. He inquires about her real name, but Cole remains silent. He introduces himself as Ali and persists in trying to engage Cole in conversation, asking her questions. However, she merely tells him to be quiet and compares him to Hannibal Lecter, a talkative character from a movie. What is Hannibal Lecter? When Ali says he's never seen that movie, Cole says that it's likely banned in the country he's from. Confused, Ali asks if it was banned in Germany, and Cole becomes slightly disconcerted. As Ali continues mumbling words, the other detainees begin wrapping their Korans in white sheets. Eventually, Ali requests some water and promises to stop talking. So Cole opens the hatch in his cell to hand him a bottle. Suddenly, Ali throws a feces cocktail at her. Other soldiers rush to her aid, and they call back up to restrain Ali. The soldiers get a day off and decide to go fishing on a yacht. Ransdell takes the opportunity to flirt with Cole, even though he seems to be with another girl. That evening, they have a party, and Cole gets very drunk. She goes to the bathroom and discovers some adult magazines. Ransdell opens the bathroom door and finds her there. She playfully teases him about the magazines. Is this what you like? The duo soon starts kissing, but after Ransdell comes on too strong, Cole tells him to stop. He doesn't listen, so she has to push him away. In the meantime, Ali is subjected to punishment after throwing the cocktail at Cole. The soldiers transfer him to different cells every two hours, so he doesn't get any rest for about a week. Cole notices that Ali's cell is being inspected. She picks up a cup and finds a meticulous design drawn by Ali on it. Another soldier takes the cup and decides to place it in a bag as potential evidence. Minutes later, Cole sees an exhausted Ali being escorted back to his cell by some soldiers. Curious, Cole sneaks away and finds the man's file. She looks into him and comes across photographs of him after being beat up. Cole delves into Ali's records and discovers that he has a history of various offenses. When she notices the code Alfred Hitchcock in the records, she asks about its meaning to a fellow soldier. He explains that they write that down when a detainee is visited by a psychiatrist. The soldier then returns to his important task of playing solitaire. It's lunchtime, and Cole sits down with another soldier named Cruz. The woman initiates a conversation by asking if he's ever read Harry Potter. Cruz says no, and Cole quickly changes the topic. Later that day, she observes Ali with attention during her rounds. 
Cole notices that he's focused on solving a Sudoku puzzle, and Ali senses someone watching him. He soon stands by the glass partition and starts talking about the game with Cole. He reveals that he's completed all the Sudoku books available in the facility, so he began creating his own puzzles. He mentions being a smart guy, even having attended a university. He offers his hand-drawn Sudoku puzzle to Cole, but she declines, citing the rules of the place. The man becomes frustrated with her excuse and soon starts ranting. Maybe you think that you're getting this from me? He sarcastically claims that the Sudoku puzzle was a secret message to a war group, so he flushes it down to send it to them. In an attempt to calm him down, Cole informs him that the Harry Potter book he's been after for years isn't available in the library, even though some guard told him he has seen it around the place. He thanks her for the information and confesses that not knowing how things will turn out truly bothers him. Eight months go by, and some detainees go on a hunger strike. Cole does her best to persuade them to eat, but they continue to refuse for five days in a row. She warns them that they know what will happen next. Some time later, one of the prisoners is taken out of his cell and restrained. The staff places an IV into his body to feed him. When a senior officer questions some soldiers about why the prisoners are doing the hunger strike, Cole informs him that she's heard something about the detainees wanting an elliptical machine. The senior officer enters the detention block and speaks with the prisoner, ultimately agreeing to their request. Days later, Cole watches Ali inside a small cage having fun with a soccer ball. Curious, she asks Ali if he's not going to use the elliptical machine. He replies with a resounding no and guarantees her that no one else is going to use it either. Ali then shares that he only managed 12 kickups that day, while another prisoner from a different pod claimed to have achieved 40. However, he doubts the accuracy of the other prisoner's claim. Cole proposes a challenge to him. If he can do more than 40 kickups, she'll vouch for him. He gives it another try but only manages 8 kicks, jokingly suggesting it was actually 48. She then tells him that cooperative detainees get to play soccer with others on a field, and he could join if he complied more. Ali claims to be aware of it, but states that cooperating would mean agreeing with their rules and mistreatment. When Ali says she probably thinks he's foolish, Cole instantly disagrees, telling him that he's smart to the point of having attended a university. As Cole and Ali share a laugh about it, one of the detainees passes by and interrupts them. The man angrily confronts Ali, probably for being friendly toward her. Cole is then called over by Ransdell, who asks her about their conversation. When she dismisses it as nothing important, Ransdell says that they shouldn't be talking at all if that's the case. Just then, Ali excitedly yells that he managed to do 20 kickups. Clearly bothered that she's getting along with a detainee, Ransdell informs Cole that he needs her assistance to monitor the showers later, since his other men are all busy. When they take Ali to shower, Ransdell instructs the detainee to undress and clean himself up, even though it makes him uncomfortable with Cole watching. Ransdell threatens to call an initial reaction force, or IRF, if he doesn't comply. Reluctantly, Ali follows Ransdell's orders, all while the soldier ensures that Cole is observing, which is a violation of their standard operating procedures and the detainee's religious rights. Later that night, Cole drinks by herself after having a rough day. As her fellow soldiers find her, she asks them about their day, mentioning that someone told her they were very busy cleaning a detainee's cell. The man gets confused and says that their pod was actually quite calm that day. That's when Cole realizes that Ransdell lied to her just to make Ali uncomfortable during his shower. Upset, the woman files a report against Ransdell for his misconduct. Soon after, she is called into the office of a senior officer to discuss the issue. To her dismay, the man sides with Ransdell and dismisses her report, suggesting that she was overly friendly with Ali. He informs her that there will be a hearing regarding the case soon and sends her away. After leaving the office, Cole sits down to eat with Cruz. As they chat, he reveals that one of the guards attempted to take his own life the past night. Cole expresses surprise and also reveals that she's been feeling guilty lately. Cruz immediately interrupts her, suggesting that she's being manipulated by some of the detainees. Just as he leaves, Ransdell approaches Cole and taunts her. Despite the challenging environment, Cole continues her duties as per usual. However, she becomes increasingly isolated from her fellow soldiers. As she does some cleaning, another guard lets her know that they're moving her to the night shift. During the day shift, Ali notices that Blondie, as he calls her, isn't around. He questions one of the active guards about it, but the man ignores him. Night falls, and Cole faces her first night shift. She passes by Ali's cell during her rounds and sees the man sleeping. When he wakes up and tries to engage in conversation, Cole advises him to go back to sleep, 
but he responds that he can't sleep properly there. Curious, Ali attempts to inquire why she's there, but he hesitates, understanding that she can't reveal sensitive information. Cole shares that she actually snitched on someone. Perplexed, Ali doesn't understand what the word snitch means, so Cole explains to him. Even though she wouldn't mention any names, Ali deduces that Ransdell was the one involved. Soon after, Ali asks Cole how she ended up at Guantanamo Bay. The soldier instantly redirects the question back to him, and he simply tells her that he's an innocent man, adding that she probably won't believe his words. Their conversation then shifts to their hometowns. Ali reveals that he's from Bremen, in Germany, while Cole tells him that she comes from a small town in the US. As another soldier enters the pod and hands Cole a cup of coffee, he remarks that she won't be on the night shift for much longer. Ali inquires about the date, and Cole informs him that it's the middle of July. Knowing that the guards change every August, Ali asks if she will attempt to get assigned to work there again. The woman declines, stating that she's gained a lot of knowledge during her time there and believes that the new guards will also learn in time. He then asks her about what she's gathered from her time here. He puts on a serious face and reminds her that they are at war with each other. He steps away from the glass and retrieves his Quran, revealing a concealed blade nestled between the pages. As he kneels down, Cole sees the blade held firmly against his throat. When she reaches for her radio, Ali instantly warns her that any attempt to signal the other guards will result in him using the blade without hesitation. Despite his surprising move, Cole persists in attempting to soothe his distress, but the man says he's not living a proper life in that hole. It is your life. It is not ours. To show her human side, Cole reveals her name, Amy, and says she's from Moorhaven, Florida. To keep his mind away from the blade, she asks him if there's a zoo in Bremen, and this catches Ali off guard. Amy proceeds to recount a childhood visit to a zoo, an experience that left her deeply affected. She explains her discomfort witnessing animals confined within small cages, even though everyone else told her it was okay, because they wouldn't survive in the wild after being there for so long. Ali suggests he understands her point, that the zookeepers couldn't do anything about whether the animals stayed locked up or not. However, she disagrees, saying that the animals deserve to choose to stay there or not. Cole then paces around the area, filled with anxiety as she doesn't know what Ali's choice will be. To her immense relief, she sees him alive, although still gripping the blade in position. As he cries, Ali eventually gives up the blade, handing it over to Amy. Their hands connect, and tears stream down their faces. Days later, we see Amy ready to depart. Meanwhile, Ali lies down as a new soldier knocks on his door, asking if he wants a book. Rising to answer, Ali teases the new guy before spotting something new on the cart. Requesting the item, he realizes it's the seventh book in the Harry Potter series. As he opens it, his eyes fall on a heartfelt note left by Cole, saying that he's a good guy. In the last scene, Cole leaves Camp X-Ray while Ali sits on his bed, eagerly reading the book he had been asking for for more than two years. Thanks for watching. If you like our content, please like the video and don't forget to subscribe.